Okay, YouTube. I had a crash tonight with my two-day-old Moa. That was really cool. The first thing I wanted to talk about was this, which is the canopy. Uh, very early in the video tonight, if you watched the flight video, you'll notice that I uh, had this little tab that helped me peel out the canopy. And that was super easy to do, except evidently when I trimmed it down to size, it ripped off the tape, or excuse me, the tape ripped. And so it pulled the, the finish off, which is really unfortunate because it's, it's really hard to match an exact color match. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this off and just get that finish off now for good so that I can get a better adhesion when I go back and do it again. And I stopped my tape right at the edge of the red. So I just wanted to show you what I'm gonna do. And that's one thing that is rather irritating about red or about any foam plane. The finish on this plane is pretty decent, but um, it's pretty much gone right there now. So one thing you can do that works well is, of course, you can use regular touch-up paint, um, but it never seems to match exactly right. Another trick that sometimes works well if it's a small part is you can try to use some red marker um, or something of that sort, and that usually helps a little bit. But in my case, what I was gonna suggest doing is on a plane like this, especially this canopy, there's, there's nothing that says it has to be red all the way back. So you could, you could just peel this paint off. And this stuff is like, almost like a latex paint. So it just peels off and rolls up. Um, the other thing you can do is you can use an X-Acto knife when it's really sharp and you can score it. And then you can take the finish and just peel it off. If I take this X-Acto knife that's pretty sharp. And if you take and just run that Say you want the pattern to be something like this. Sometimes you can get pretty lucky and it will come back to wherever you peel it from. See how it kind of starts falling off? But it's really frustrating when you get a brand new plane and then you, you have an unscheduled landing like that. And it was, it was totally my fault. Um, so if you haven't seen it yet, I'm not going to totally give it away, but... Watch the flight video if you want to see the crash. So as you can see, this is just kind of a pain. It's kind of like almost like this rubbery finish. And a lot of planes are like that. Now one other thing you can do too that works nicely, that's totally weird, is if you use just stand, like standard kicker. Um, I want to put it on with a Q-tip today because you see that marker? I'm going to try to take that off. See how that'll cut the marker. The second thing is that's... This, this paint, for whatever reason, when it reacts with the foam, um, and no glue, just the kicker, it will actually break down the bond on that glue, and you can really take that stuff off nicely. So I just wanted to show you that real quick, just take this opportunity after the crash. So what I'll do is I'll take ice purple alcohol, I'll wipe this all down, I'll put my tape exactly where I want it, and then um, I'll probably just paint it with this red testers paint. And I'll show you that toward the end because um, I have probably a couple other touch-ups to make. So I wanted to show you that. You'd be thinking about that if you run into a situation like that. So what do I have out for this repair? Why don't we give them a shot of the repairs. Pops in your hand, not in your mouth. This is a Hobby King product. It's called Mucilage-L. That's a large package. And then can you get a shot of that label so they can see? Hold on. So, mm, yeah. Okay. So basically when you open this stuff, it does kind of dry out a little bit and you can see it's like, this tube is pretty good. It's pretty viscous. Uh, the viscosity is, is thin. It's usually not very thin, but it's one of these where you have to cut the tip. And so once you've cut it, it's cut and it starts setting up. So squeeze the air out of the tube when you're done using it so that it keeps it from drying inside. Um, and then if you lose a little bit, you can just kind of squeeze and force it out and then, then it pops in your hand, not your mouth. So you gotta be careful about that. Also, I have some cotton. I have a bunch of Q-tips. And what that's used for is if I'm gonna use CA thin foam safe, thick foam safe, I get this stuff, I refill the bottles and then I just uh, cut the tips off. And then these are just like standard um, toothpicks. toothpicks. And the toothpicks will be reinforcing members for us. 
on a real small repair like this, especially on a light plane. Of course, you want an X-Acto knife, which you've already seen how we're going to use that. And then we can paint with these. And I have just a couple of different types of red tape. Um, this one's probably a little bit better match. It's, it's hard saying if this is going to be a perfect match, but whatever match you get that's better, just go with that one. This just happens to be a power phase brand. Um, and you can see the match is not perfect on either of these, but this is, this is maybe a little bit closer than this. So that's another thing you can do is you could use this vinyl electrical tape to make your tab that would allow you to pull this up, but the red tape's gonna show, so I don't wanna do that. So anyway, just uh, I'll just show you what that, how this works out. Um, and then when I get this stuff at my shop and I'm bringing it upstairs, this is the other thing, this Instacure Crystal Clear. Um, this is a foam safe product. It works okay. Mucilage uh, works better. The pops in your hand, not in your mouth, works better. Um, this will have a little bit of color to it sometimes but you can peel this off a little easier. Both of these you can roll up little boogers and clean it off your fingers. Uh, this stuff is a similar price point. Um, again, I refill the smaller bottle because it's easier to use a smaller bottle to apply this stuff. Um, and this bottle is a little bit nicer because you can open and close it and you can cut the cap to whatever size you want. This thing is pretty much what it is. And it's like a tube of toothpaste, so make sure the kids don't eat it. It's dangerous, I'm sure. Okay, the last thing that we're going to be using today is a cup of vodka. So I'm just going <laughs> to... Just kidding. It's not vodka. It's water. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this into this strange microwave radiation device. And I'm going to go like that for four minutes. And the way you test to see how this is going to work is you grab out of your cabinet a cup. And you say, okay, cup, are you big enough? To stick the broken component in. Now, if you're like me, you have martini glasses and margarita cups and things like this. Not that we ever really use them, but the thing is, those things do work nice and they have a wide mouth, so the, the problem is they're not very deep. So another way you can do that, and you just stick it in the microwave and microwave it, it's a lot easier than boiling it on the stove. Plus, then your wife isn't complaining about the paint fragments that get stuck to the side of the Teflon-coated pans. Or that she was making rice and you stole her water. If you steal water <laughs> while they're making it, it, it's allowed. I'm sorry, it is. So, anyway, you can see we have one other minor issue here. Yes. The, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's broken all the way through. So, there, yeah, there's your problem. So, the wing broke in half. I also broke this. Yep, there's a problem. But the good news is the foam didn't crush much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix that super easy. And actually we're gonna fix this relatively easy too. And we're gonna do our very best that when we're done with this, first of all, you won't see that it's broken, but you're gonna know that it's broken because you watched the video. But the most important part of this is getting this crushed nose taken care of because obviously this foam is not gonna line up very good in this condition. Now, yes, you could glue that back together and yes, it would fly fine. I already flew it after I crashed it for like one glide and then it just hit in the grass and this just broke off the rest of the way. It was gonna break off anyway. Um, I wanted to see if I could get away with flying it some more for you guys, not for me, it had nothing to do with me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look inside here and I'm gonna see that there's three connection points for the motor and they're taped. Can you look inside here where I'm looking? Okay, so you see those three wires, guys? Those wires are what connect the motor, okay? The problem I have now is in order to dip this into water, I kind of almost need to take the nose off. Interestingly enough, there's not that much crush damage on the nose. So the less you have to dip in the water, the better. It will almost always discolor the paint. If you have decals, they hold up pretty decent usually. But if they slide, just slide them back while they're wet. If they're like this, where it's an adhesive style, then you, you're gonna be fine, they won't even move. So another thing is, let's look at the microwave. We're at a minute from ending. You can see it's boiling. So this stuff is to the point where it's like, watch it from the inside. Can you see it through there? Mm, I don't know, yeah. Okay, watch the water. No, don't focus on the Don't inside. worry about it, it's good enough. Okay, so we're at a minute. We, we did four minutes, come back over here. 
See that? It's gonna start boiling, guys. It's gonna start boiling. It's gonna do it. But watch, when you open it, it's so weird because, no, I'm just, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> just joking. So you take this rag, watch this. Put that over here. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo, it's hot. Do you see what happened, guys? That's why you don't stick your finger in there or other appendages. I wanted to show you that because it's, it'll sneak up on you. You'll think it's not boiling and then it's like, what the heck? It was sitting still. It wasn't boiling three seconds ago. And then when I stuck my thing in it, it was boiling. So don't do that. Anyway, I wanted to show you that for extra excitement. So then you'll get your oven mitts. Don't, don't drink it either. Okay, so that's three minutes of cook time plus 10 seconds, so 310. Um, so now, ideally what you want to do is just ram this into the hole until you can smooth it out. We're not going to do that. We're going to actually disconnect the motor leads. Or we're going to actually, maybe we can get lucky enough to just pull this down. Oh yeah, baby. It's three boys. Look at that, guys. Three boys. So we're just going to lay that aside. There's your problem. The motor fell off. So now watch. There's hardly any crush damage here, but it's enough to justify doing a little dip, okay? Particularly here. And you know, honestly, not a huge fan of this. Not a huge fan of advertisements for the company that made it all over the plane, but it is what it is. It's a scale plane. So, watch what happens, guys. Watch close. Do you have a good view of a crushed point? I think you need to be over here more. Yeah. Because the, the wing doesn't like get out of your way at all. Okay, how about this side? Okay. Is that the best? Yeah. Okay, now two trains of thought. One, is my hand in the way? Nope. You gotta work around it, I'm sorry. Yep. It barely fits. Oh yeah, I'm squeezing it in. Okay, now you gotta let it work for a second, guys. We may need to heat the water up a little bit more. We have good penetration though. All right, you see it getting bubbly? You see it's starting to get bubbly? That's not a good look, guys. It's not a good look, but it's part of the nature of the beast. You may lose some paint. You're just gonna have to get over it, me. See, what I'm doing is I'm just kinda, I'm gonna smooth this back into position. You notice that crack closed up. Look at that, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm doing is I'm just pulling my thumb with a little bit of light pressure to mitigate some of the dimpling that's inevitably going to happen. It will happen and you have to get on it right away. If you wait, it will not go away very good. You can go back later and touch it up. Now this side sucks still. <laughs> See that guys? Those, those uh, lines I don't like. So what we're gonna do on this part is we're gonna take our really cool water, we're gonna put it back in the microwave, and we're gonna go for nuclear temperatures. So another two minutes. We're just gonna let that work for a minute. I've got this paper towel here. I didn't, it's not really for drying water, it's for CA if I need to use CA. Always when you're doing this stuff, have a paper towel ready, you're probably gonna need it. Cause you're gonna giggle on your hands, you're gonna be like, oh, I wish I had something to wipe this on. And then you're gonna be like, oh, I'll swipe it on my shirt. And then your wife's gonna be all mad. So, let's look at the motor mount. Yes, I was afraid of that, guys. Looks like we have a little bit of separation on the glue joint here. So, but ironically enough, the motor is fine. I did end up spinning up the motor after I freed it from the edge. You see that, guys? So what I need to do now is I need to basically go ahead and glue this back in before I can get all this schmutz figured out. That's a technical term. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to take the lid off. Over here is better. We're going to take this and we're just going to force this schmutz in there. We're just going to put pressure and you see, show them the end of the tube real quick. The end of the tube. You see it pops in your hand and not in your mouth. If you don't want it to pop in your hand, you have to be careful you don't apply too much pressure because this stuff will pop in your hand. And it's not desirable, guys. Not at all. It happened to me in a video. You can watch it if you really want to. It did. It did. It was awesome. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna take this Q-tip and just spread this a little bit. Ideally, you wanna apply this and then let it sit and just let it chill. You see what I'm doing? I'm just spreading it to the other spots where I know it's gonna be needed. You see how sticky it's getting already? I can barely spin it now. Your timer's gonna beep. I don't care okay. about that, that's fine. Okay, see what I'm doing? See how sticky and tacky? Look at all the strings. Looks like a spider web. Okay, I'm throwing that Q-tip away because I had kicker on it. Okay, I'm gonna press this to reseat the motor mount. You see how it displaced a lot of that stuff? If you really want this to stick good, you'll pull it apart and you'll stick it and you'll pull it apart and you'll stick it and you'll pull it apart and stick it. Next thing you know, you'll have a baby plane on your hands. <laughs> See this? There's some extra glue, look at that, it's convenient. That stuff spreads a lot further than you might give it credit for. Okay. See this guys? Just squishing it out, spreading it around getting it on every contour that I can easily reach, particularly this area, which for whatever reason wasn't glued very well to begin with. And sometimes, you know, I mean, <clears throat> this stuff is pretty easy to spread, um, but it gets to a point where it's it's easy to spread, but it's, it's very viscous, it's thick. So you gotta be careful. You don't want this to be on the finished surfaces because it is kind of ugly. Okay. It, it, and it doesn't do anything for you on the finished surfaces. Try not to bump the wing if you can avoid it. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm just spreading it so that it gets into the surfaces. You don't need to work quick with this stuff. It, it can sit there and tack up and you could come back to this in probably like 15 minutes and it would be fine, okay? And in fact, some people say to let it cook for a while. And when I say cook, you see what I'm doing? I'm spreading it out and I'm making these strings and it looks weird and sticky and icky and bleh. So now I'm gonna push this motor, and you guys notice something. It doesn't come undone now, unless I push it. Now when this sets up, it won't come undone, period. It will not come undone. Yeah, dang. Now it's hard to get off of you. Next thing you know, you're, you're sitting here saying, how do I get it off of me? Well, you just rub it off like that. Just give it a good rub off. So, see how I'm just pulling that into position? And by the way, just a little stress, on the nose cone, evidently the ground was reasonably soft where I ran into it at full speed. I try to not do that under normal circumstances, but evidently today I just, my decision making was not as good as it is under normal circumstances for whatever reason. Okay, so you see how it's still, I'm just kind of working it a little bit. That will set up and it will get solid and it will be stuck very, very, very good. Okay, these leads, eventually I'm gonna have to stick in the hole so that I can re-secure them to my electronic speed control. That's gonna be fun, I can't wait. Okay, so now we've got this stuff that we were heating up, and the reason we're heating it up, woo, that's extreme hot. I'm gonna need my, where did I put my things? I don't think you put them away. Oh, they're in here, guys. Here they are. Okay, so the, the oven mitt is a necessity right now, because this thing is actually nuclear temperatures. So you'll want to be careful about that. All right, so let's go over the sink so we can show them how we're going to do this. Because I'm going to dump. I'm going to dump all over this. Okay. Are you ready? Obviously, no, you want to go over my other shoulder because yep. that's where I'm dumping it. You see this side, guys? Watch this. Oh, it's hot. You see what I'm doing, guys? I'm dumping water on it. It's amazing. You've probably never seen anything like that before in your life except for when you did it yourself last week. So, now I'm gonna pull it. I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it hard. See? And amazingly enough, this will, believe it or not, it will take that finish back to where it needs to be. It looks like we might need just another treatment like that to get this last little bit out. But you see, we're broke there, so we can go ahead and get that glued back together before we get this totally done. So that's our next step. If you want to pause it for a second. Okay. Oh, hello, YouTube. You're back. So what's going on is I am now drying this little area. And when I say drying, I'm just touching it dry. You see that little crack there? This separated there. So we need to force some glue in there. And we also need to glue this back together. So we're going to do that next, actually, because that's the bigger piece. 
So when possible, split the opening and force glue into the joint. You can run the, the glue on the surface a little bit and you're gonna to wanna to clean that off relatively quick because it will poop out of the joint and it will be ugly, okay? So you see how I stuck that in there? Now what's what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just let it, I'm gonna push it down into the crack a little bit. You see there's quite a bit of excess and I'm just walking it. Now I'm gonna take um, previously used but unused side and I'm just gonna walk along this area and I'm just gonna roll it back into the Q-tip. And this is where you're gonna be likely to end up having issues. Now, the reason I dried this other spot is because now I can spread that stuff over here. Cause it's not like, I'm really worried about the cost of this glue, it's very cheap, but it's more just, you're gonna have to do this anyway, so you might as well go ahead and spread it where you need it. And plus you wanna walk it away from your finish cause you can save a lot of that finish actually. And what I'm doing is I'm just spreading it. Why don't you trade over to the other side here, hon, so you can film from that. See what I'm doing? I'm just putting it into each contour as much as possible. And ironically, this stuff will actually stick. If there's a little bit of moisture still, it'll work. Uh, it's better if it's dry, but it'll work. Okay, now up by this tire, I'm really just gonna be careful to kinda not get all over the tire. And you can see, the key to doing this is just to cover as much of that surface area as you can possibly get. Eventually, it's gonna to wanna to all web together anyway. I'm trading spots here. Okay, going for a new Q-tip, guys. Going in. Okay, so you see I walked out some. See how I pulled some of that paint off? That's what I was talking about. This stuff will eat the finish of your paint occasionally. So now you see that little area, how it lifts? I'm tempted to use CA on that, but this stuff works better. This um, pops in your hand, not in your mouth. It's just stronger, it's more durable, it's got a little bit of elasticity to it. And this is where it's kind of challenging to get this stuff off, so I'm just gonna use my thumb. And I've got a paper towel here ready to go. And then I've got my other forefinger here. And I'm just gonna wipe it off. And you see what I'm talking about? This stuff will get really, really sticky in a hurry. Okay, so. Go back around. Yeah, go back around now. So it looks like we're probably gonna lose a little bit of finish here. So I have to make a decision now if I'd rather, if I'd rather try to hold this for a minute or if I wanna come back and try to get the nose secured. And I am a little bit nervous about that glue getting set up totally. The worst part about this whole thing is that it's two days old. If this would have happened after six months, I would have been annoyed, but it would have been a different level of annoyance. See, and I'm just holding this now, guys. See what happens? There you go. I knew I'd do it. I, I went and did it. But since I already did it, I'm going to go ahead and peel the rest off. And why am I doing that? Because that's going to make a perfectly clean area for me to repaint. See? Unfortunately. That's okay. I could probably peel all of this off and you wouldn't even know it was there except that all the plastic components would be red. Okay guys, you see how it's not letting go? It's not letting go. You get that stuff in there and it'll work. It's gonna work, good. I really, this pops in your hand, not in your mouth. This stuff does really work nicely. This mucil, mucil, mucilage or whatever it is. Okay, so throwing that away. So now we have a nice joint. I would say if you don't have a painted surface, go ahead and put it in, in place and then tape it with a piece of tape, which we're probably going to go ahead and tape it. Normally, I don't like to do this because the tape will for sure take off the finish, but it's just, it's got to be done. So I'm holding it tight and then I'm going to tape it. So I'm overstressing the joint. Oh no! I got a glue right on there. Don't tell your wife. Oh, dang it. Guys, if you get this stuff on your shirt, you can just throw it away, especially right there. That's a wonderful spot to have glue all over your shirt. Maybe my wife can get that out. I'll ask <laughs> her later. All right, so 
we have glue on this end and we have glue on the nose. You see how it gets all weird and tacky like that? That's what we want, okay? I'm gonna just go a little bit heavier and I'm gonna favor toward the inside now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work it right there. Not toward the outside, I want it to go on, if it's gonna goop anywhere, I want it to goop inside. Now, while we have an easy reach at it, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one too. I'm just squeezing the bottle to force the glue into the broken point. You see how I did that and it poops out? It works good. Works good, guys. Watch your tail. What am I watching? The tail. Oh, yeah, okay, thank you, hon. I will. Okay, now also you don't want those strings to go across the opening because that's where your motor leads have to go. You don't want to totally consume that opening. So now I'm just working this. Now it's pretty obvious you're gonna have some finish issues to touch up later. But for the moment, this will at least get it so that it's gonna be one piece. And the thing's gonna fly fine. You're not even gonna know that it was broken, except for the fact that you know, you've know seen the video and stuff. Okay, so now decision time. Yep, okay, I don't smell a lot of chemical reactivity going on. So I'm sticking this under. You see it on there? See how there's a tray? See how there's a tray? That tray, you need to put these leads underneath your tray. It's gonna be a bear to get those out later too, but that's fine. We can take the motor out if we really, really, really need to. Okay, so now I'm basically just trying to line all this crap up and it's super awkward. Okay, so you see, now I'm walking this back into place and the motor mount is incidentally what's making it tricky to get lined up because the motor mount actually has to bite. Now look at this. Get a shot of that. I can't stop working. I got to keep working. You have to get in there around me. This foam has been crushed a little bit, so they're not mating up perfectly. Also, you expand the foam. And so what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to take and I'm going to force these into each other. And there's just a very limited amount that's pooped out, which, which is good, and we're lucky. So now the hard part becomes, you know, is that gonna be too ugly? Is it gonna be acceptable? And to be honest with you, at this point, you don't really have a choice. And one thing you can do to mitigate some of the risk of having this happen is to not do your foam in the water first, do it second. But the problem is you have to have somewhere to hold it together initially to start with. And so when this is all said and done, I can go back and I can actually reheat this whole area and it will expand everywhere except for here, which is gonna look like some sort of a weird puckered butthole right on the face of the plane. So it's gonna be the butt, butt face plane. So we'll, we'll from, from that forevermore, it will now be the butt face plane um, so what have we learned kids don't crash your plane or it will be at the butt, butt face plane oh man that's unfortunate two days old so the next thing we got to do is I'm just basically working some of the extra glue out of this hole this is clearly just a cooling hole now interestingly on the shape of this plane I was telling my wife this after filming earlier, I felt like, you know, the shape of the plane is actually a little bit too long for a MOA. Um, so it was a little bit tempting to just say, take the nose off and, and redesign the nose a little bit. But I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. So now I'm just squishing it together. And occasionally, if you do that three or four times, it's gonna be tight. It's not gonna come undone. Can you go ahead and pause that? Okay, so basically what we've been doing for the last minute or so is just kind of working this joint as tight as we can make it, okay? You can see that there's a crack and you're never gonna completely eliminate that crack, but like this, this rippling here, what you want is you want a smooth transition, as smooth as you can make it. Now, believe it or not, you can actually clean that up a lot with CA later. But for now, I wanna mitigate some of that weight. I don't wanna add any more CA than's absolutely necessary to make it look nice at the end. And you can see the general shape is very close to what it had been, okay? 
it's from a distance, you're never gonna know. But I'm gonna be like this far from it. So I wanna be able to see it correct. I want it fixed at some point in the process. But part of the issue is that this needs to expand out just a hair. The only way to do that is to heat up water and actually pour it on the outside because they don't want to dip the entire motor in even though it wouldn't hurt it. It's just going to be wet for a second and then dry off. It's not running. Um, so what I need to do now is get this wing reattached. Okay, so one thing about wings, okay? This has screws so it can be opened up. And so what I think I'm probably going to try to do is... In this case, I'm going to try to open it real quick just because I can. It's not that hard, so I'm going to do it that way. Plus, I need to reattach the electronic speed control, so this might give me access to the electronics. So while I unscrew these, we're going to pause the video, and my wife's going to get some water in the microwave. Okay, so we've got some water going, guys. Now what we're going to do is we're going to undo some of these um, pieces that hold the wing on. I usually don't even take this stuff apart because usually it's not the second day that I put the plane up in the air. Okay, so everything's come apart very nicely. And then what we have is one more consideration, which is gonna be, of course, the aileron controls. And look, we had more or less what looks like a somewhat of a clean break here. The other thing is we have this, we have this rod that we're gonna need to inspect and just make sure it's not like crazy bent or something weird. Don't worry about it, it's fine. Now the reason I'm not concerned about having this wing apart is I'm gonna need to pull the ESC back or get, in fact, while this is open, why don't we fix that? Those ESC leads need to be reattached. So just re-pushing this back together again, we may have to tape that too, I'm, unfortunately, I'm thinking, mm. so that it stays tight. Um, I'm just gonna tape top and bottom. Now, normally when I use tape like this, I will take and cut the end so it's square rather than having those little ridges on them because ridges like that will make it uh, separate down the length of the tape if you have to pull the tape off later. So I'm pushing together the tightness here. I'm just tightening it up and then pressing the tape from where I first applied it out. See how I did that? So now that's gonna hold that joint tight. Now, awkwardly enough, I'm gonna probably flip this plane upside down and do the bottom too while we're at it. I might need a hand, I hope I don't, but I might. Okay. okay, so this side here, we'll just go ahead and do the same thing. It's just not worth finding out that we needed to do this later. And the only problem with